I don't know why you're smiling, it's all your fault! Hey guys, welcome back to Twitch's Kerbal Space Program where we are looking at Ignis. The craft we have been working on for far too many episodes now. The craft that will take the Kerbals of this particular save state off on their first interplanetary mission. So we need to go over to the tracking center and start thinking about our transfer window over to Juna. So uh, zooming out a little bit, I noticed this hunk of space junk over there. Now for those of you that have been with me for a long time, you'll remember back to about episode 6, Kerbal Broke Program, where we launched the Autumn Leaf. This absolute calculator of a machine, it literally has no SAS, it's got a couple of uh, solar panels on it, and such a small amount of fuel that it is almost laughable. But that small amount of fuel, plus combined with such a tiny vessel means that we can get it going around the system at uh, not not a rate it's it's quite slow but uh, quite effectively it, it it does what we need it to do now i do have trouble pointing it in the way i want to go and we're about to go on a massive sidetrack as as is the way of my uh my series is now uh we were supposed to be going to juna straight away today we are going to be doing that today don't worry there will merely six minutes before we get onto that but the first thing i need to do is make sure that this little vessel here has an encounter with eve because this is what it this is where it's going this is where we can get best gravity assist for a different different flight path and as you can see there we are going to lay it up for a trip to moho after this but first back on with trying to figure out where our transfer window is so obviously we've got the Kerbal alarm clock set up to tell us exactly when we're getting close enough I also put an alarm on for uh, the autumn leaf there to make sure that when it gets its encounter just like this which happened to be before the uh, Juna transfer window which is uh, not quite what I wanted but it, it will do I was kind of hoping that we'd send the Ignis off before we got round to, to, to doing this particular maneuver here and now I'm trying to decide which way do I want to to fly out of the Eve system now we could either go up like that towards Drez or we could come down to Moho and I, I was a little bit mm, and, uh, I wanted to see how well we could lay up to Drez here and as it turned out not very well it was, it was very bad indeed so if we use the same uh, same velocity but turn it around to the other side of Eve you'll see that we're going down in the in the solar system there which is great that's where I want to go I'm sending this thing to Moho maybe when we're down there we'll see if we can get some gravity assist further up if we can get a gravity assist from Moho every time and then try and send it up in increments of Moho's um, sphere of influence uh, not sphere of influence orbital period we should be able to do some wonderful stuff but there was Eve just that beautiful flyby there no science because this vessel has no science on board it this is literally just a sightseeing tour and with that small flyby uh, not really much else to do here I wanted to play around with some maneuver notes see if there was any way of getting even closer to Moho uh, it turns out there wasn't and for some reason you'll see here that my um, my orbit was a lot bigger than what this is just now. I have no idea why that was showing me that. I cleared, I cleared off a, a separate maneuver node, uh, the maneuver node that I'd put down after I realised how big the orbit was, and then it reset it down to the small one. So I, yeah, really no idea what's going on there. But more maneuver node action time. We're trying to figure out what's the best way to leave the Kerbin system and go to uh, Juna. So what I'm trying to do here is get those uh, close encounter points being uh, an encounter an actual encounter and then making trying to make it so that it's on the furthest point of my orbit away from me so I, I will um play with the velocity up and down my ejection velocity and then move the maneuver node a little bit further back as it turned out around my orbit to see what what the best angle is we could take turns out it was uh, starting to thrust just as our orbit passes the retrograde line of Kerbin's orbit um so like if we're looking along Kerbin's orbit it'll be just as we pass the bottom point of it uh, so i was having a little bit of trouble as we uh, start this burn here the big burn this is the one that's going to take us to juna but my middle nuclear engine was overheating so i had to get in there and turn the thrust limiter down which kind of worked amazingly well actually uh i, I was kind of hoping it would but i didn't think it would because you know it's still in the middle of all these heat sources i was expecting it to pick up all the heat anyway but no that that was beautiful so if you're having overheating problems in space just turn that that particular engine down on the thrust limiter and you'll do well okay this burn was a nice long boring one uh, all i had to do was go from a to b but there were a few things that were making it interesting first you'll notice that i'm running out of fuel incredibly quickly now i don't know why this is at this point i do now but as i was looking i didn't know um it turned out turned out that i'd actually disabled that orange fuel tank in the middle there just so that when i was lifting it up i wouldn't waste any fuel 
uh, trying to do that. So what I had to do was uh, turn off all the fuel tanks that are other than that in the vessel, turn the orange tank back on. If you don't know how to turn your tanks on and off, if you um, click on the, the tank, next to the fuel gauge you will see uh, a green arrow almost sort of thing that's like that indicates flow whereas if you click on it it will be a, a standard red circle with a line on it meaning that it's not working go go and experiment with that you'll, you'll see what i mean but we are getting rather close to our encounter with juna here and watching actually uh, watching actual juna using the focused view in the map we can see how close we are getting to juna here so i have slightly overcooked it but turning around making a retrograde burn we're now watching juna itself and my path through the juna system so we're just a little bit of tweaks and, and doing things that we want to do i could get myself really close not quite as close as i want it to be though and this is going to have to wait for a little while because we need to make an inclination burn and obviously if my point of um, transfer is on the very opposite side of my orbit doing an inclination change here is going to do nothing because we'll just pivot around the same point so from this point on it's all about trim maneuvers and getting some beautiful shots for the uh, the pr department um we just breeze past a maneuver node here because i'd actually set up a maneuver made the alarm decided that i could do the maneuver better get it even closer so we're gonna have to go through and redo that so we set a maneuver node to make sure that our periapsis grazes very very slightly over the north uh, the south pole of juno in fact i am setting up my aero braking distance from this this maneuver node here uh about 12 kilometers is what i'm aiming for here so i went and checked up on the wiki uh 14 kilometers it said i was just going to like skip away off into interstellar space 11 kilometers and i would be smashing my way into uh mountains and neither of those scenarios was what i wanted so 12 kilometers is the one we're aiming for and thanks to the maneuver node system here we can get it pretty much spot on down to like point something meters per second uh, here i'm going uh, here i am at point two but I reckon we can get it all the way down to point zero, and there we are. Not quite over the very south pole, but that is close enough for me. Close enough for us to time accelerate our way through down to at least the uh, sphere of influence change, as indicated by the alarm clock there. You can see the day count counting down. And here we go, sphere of influence change. It's time to start thinking about where we're going to go and what we're going to do. Or rather, I say that, but of course, with the trim maneuver, now our sphere of influence is going to uh, sphere of influence change is going to be a little bit further along. This is something that I keep forgetting to sort out, and I really should remember. But there we go. That that's how this works. Uh, we're looking for Juna now. Uh, this is always something that I have great trouble with doing when I'm uh, approaching a planet like this. Is just trying to spot it amongst the myriad of points in the in the background. And there we go. You could you could just see that very very briefly there on my staging view. Uh, we're just going to wait for the encounter to pass and with our close dive here i think we're all set up and ready to go so there's a few things we need to do in preparation for this one is make sure our wing is facing the right direction because obviously that is the only thing that actually is active in the in the atmosphere other than drag of course which is why we're going in the atmosphere so we want to make sure that that wing is pointing in the other right direction the other thing is we want all the explore contracts we've been putting off grabbing those for some time um no reason other than trying to keep my contract board clear uh, and now with those contracts selected i'm gonna see what science we can do from from far out uh, as it turns out crew reports pretty much all you can do with what i took brought with me i've only got one goo canister and one material science bay unless you count the probe but that's going away and that's a very different different beast so with all the different beasts strapped around the outside of this fuel tank it's start, time to start thinking about the actual aero braking maneuver we're getting in like super close now we can see the polar ice cap there isn't it beautiful in fact we can see two new bodies now that we've we've seen eve we've seen juna and we've seen e ike eek yeah we've seen eek which aside from the grand tour type um episodes i think is probably some sort of uh, record you know two two different planets and a moon i don't know may maybe maybe not who knows if, if you guys have done better in one mission well one episode i suppose one 20 minute se section please do let me know so here we are at full-blown periaps indeed we are starting to come to the point where we're going to start uh, going back up again and i think the aero brake is going really well uh, we are losing altitude of our apple apps at quite a rate i was starting to wonder whether i would actually need to uh, provide a bit of boost to make sure that we get up and over and back out of the atmosphere i was really worried about like crashing this into juno uh, but it turned out no 12 kilometers was the ticket here and we can fly our way back up to our several hundred kilometer apple apps and circularize our burn lovely 
But let's watch our first sunrise over another planet. I, I think that's beautiful there. It's, it's something we need to do on every planet we visit is go, go and watch that first sunrise. We did it from orbit. It'd be nice to do it from, from the surface and we will be doing it from the surface at some point. But a little bit of mucking around there. We're going to time accelerate our way back up as soon as we are at the top of the atmosphere, which I figure out to be about 40 kilometers. So if we uh, try and get our periaps scraping across that atmosphere there, we'll then be close enough for any sort of landing maneuvers we want to make on our next pass i think i do it on our next pass but with the complications that are about to happen and there'll be a couple of cuts to show you the complications i'm not entirely certain whether it was this orbit or the next orbit or what so here we go our, our um getting ourselves back out of the atmosphere burn because obviously we, if we went round without touching anything we would then air a break again and i believe that would slam us into the floor uh, okay, time to fire up all our ScanSat stuff. That is what we are here for, or rather it is what we brought it for. We want complete maps of this planet below us, mainly to help look for anomalies and landing sites. But with that thought in process, it's time to start getting rid of all these strut endpoints here. We, we want to try and make it so that the, the vessel is ready to go, and we don't want to be taking down any extra mass that, that, that we don't really need. Now, I'm almost certain these parts are physicsless. But it's worth like taking it into consideration anyway, right? I mean, we wouldn't leave these there if it was real life. So yeah, let's do it that way. Now, why Bill's flowing around doing all that, I'm going to talk to you about my next consideration for the landing zone. So I want to land basically on the, the day-night Terminator. Nice, nice long shadows to worry about there. But I have three separate things that I want to land in the same spot. And I'm obviously in some, well, close to a polar orbit. Which means that if I do it on separate orbits, they're going to land so far away from each other. You know, each orbit will go around and the planet would have turned a certain amount. So what I need to do, at least for this rover and the landing um, pod, is try and get them done on the same orbit so that they land close to each other. The glider, I figure I could probably get to like do some sort of mid-air turns and, and at least point in the right direction when it lands so we can like drive it across in the right direction. Uh, the rover, I'm almost certain we're going to break the wheels of when we land at this point, so I, I know everything's kind of stuck. So, I have launched both the rover and the Ignis probe, not the Ignis probe, the Ignis lander here. Uh, I did a quick save up at Apple Apps, so I will, I will level with you here. Um, I got my landing lo laid up for the rover, so I, that basically it was hands-free at this point. Um, I'd already popped my parachutes, uh, I'd made sure that the aero brake was going to be deep enough that it would land all on its own, and made sure the wheels were pointed in the right direction, whilst hopefully the orbit of the higher Ignis probe would take longer, and then we could use its engines to brake and come down. That was the theory. Um, <coughs> kind of worked, kind of worked. We're, we're going to go through this now. So we're getting the, 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 the rover here. It's deep in the atmosphere, as you can see, 17 kilometers. Still, I'm doing some backpedaling with the RCS. It wasn't quite as deep as it could have been. Um, though, as I say, I'm trying to land on the Terminator there with the, the, the nice uh, shadows. So we're, we're just going to try and ease it back until we get to sunrise. My tra trajectory is looking good. It's looking surprisingly good. Um, I had uh, alarm clocks set up for all the periapses for all the ver various vehicles doing this. So I now know with that, pa that um, alarm going there that the Ignis lander has actually already gone past periapse, which already made me think maybe this is going to be going wrong somewhere. But we're going to wait. We're going to see what happens. Uh, we're at eight. Eight kilometers, nine kilometers, and our parachute's open, and our speed just starts properly dropping. And we land in what could, what could quite possibly be the most idyllic spot we have on Juno, though 33 meter per second orbital landing is uh, quite harsh. Uh, so here we go, we're going to try and get the Ignis probe down, or the Ignis lander down. Uh, and I already note that we are going far too fast, they're, they're, this, is, this is just a bad landing. Um, my main concern though is how much fuel we've got. Like, if I can get down using less than half the fuel, I know we'll be alright because then I can throw us back up into that sort of orbit. Um, now, as it turns out, I've already blown past that, so I'm like, alright, well, it's over. If I landed now, I'd never be able to get them back up anyway. So we're going to reload back to up here. Hey, we're back up at Periaps. Uh, not Periaps, back up at Apple Apps. Wow, Periaps, eh? Um, and we're going to try We're going to try the same thing, basically. I, I, I think it's probably my execution that's, that's messed me up here. Um, and we're going to try a slightly more aggressive um, uh, orbital change of the lander halfway around its orbit and, and see what see what happens from here. 
So the Rover, despite not really messing around with any of its orbital dynamics, has come down a little bit further um, around, like into the polar ice cap. The, the periapsis is down quite low and we barely make it over the ice cap itself before we come in for a landing. A little bit deeper in the atmosphere this time, so we come down nice and slow. Um, we're coming down at about 10, 10, 9 meters per second, something like that. But still, when we land, smash up the front wheels. Not great. Uh, the Ignis lander looking a little bit better now, looking a little bit better. Um, we're going to try and ease our way down. Got to deploy our land again. We can see that that, that little um, cut in the, in the ice cap there is where we're heading for. So I need to try and keep myself up high enough to go, get close enough, yet still trying to slow down using the, the power of the atmosphere. Uh, angling a little bit to try and get ourselves closer. And hopefully we're going to use our parachutes to great effect soon. Uh, right, so we're flying over the top and we need to stop, uh, like full engines go, but with a relative velocity of over 800 meters per second relative to the craft, uh, we're, we're not really going to be stopping here anytime soon. Uh, I'm expecting my parachutes to pop out any time, I'm not sure why it took so long for them to come out like that, but there we go, that's how long they took, but everything exploded, so that obviously was, was not a winner there. So, I figure that... Moving the Ignis probe when it's halfway around its orbit is obviously not giving me enough time. So it's time to produce this weird maneuver node here, which gives me like ample time to do stuff with. This is what we need to do. We need to really just like kick it round and, and give myself as much time as possible to play with. Even with this maneuver here, I still only have something about 15 minutes to play with. And as it takes us something like seven minutes to land, I, I don't know if it is seven minutes to land. I'm just going with the uh, the seven minutes of terror from Mars here. We're cutting it a little bit fine here. Um, literally landing time, switch landing time. But that's fine. That should be fine this time. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna finally go for like a first sunset because this is still our first first orbit here. Uh, we're gonna scream down just over the pole here. Uh, hopefully the periapsis is right over the edge of the pole so that here we are screaming over and, and coming down towards dawn this is what we're looking for as i uh, said last time we're trying to get ourselves put down uh on on the the, the day night terminator here slightly overshoot but i'm happy with that I, I i'm totally happy with that and we come down for a relatively nice landing in a relatively flat area which uh, i don't think we could have done any better with here ignus is a long way away this is good this is this is kind of laying up where we want to be here uh jebediah taking the controls he, he is the only one qualified to do so here uh bringing all our technology all our science to bear watching ike disappear behind uh juno over there we say bye bye ike we, we will try and get round to ike at some point it's a shame that we've landed on completely the wrong side of the planet here uh, i would have liked to have been able to look up and watch ike and i do believe it is in uh a geosynchronous orbit with juno so it's only ever going to be over that type of uh, that point on the surface so that, that's a little bit disappointing um another thing that's a little bit disappointing is my um my trajectory here seems to be falling a little bit short and a little bit to the left or west as i suppose it should be um but that's fine you know we, we, can, we can add little little pushes get ourselves going in the right direction uh 600 meters per second seems like a fair landing speed don't don't you think no, no i don't think that at all so the problem there was that I just got far too used to setting my uh, my parachutes off up high and for some reason I didn't take it into consideration when I was coming down quite low to the surface there to fire my parachutes, which is a, a little bit silly. Um, so we, we did basically exactly the same thing. Once again, we've not really changed any of the orbital dynamics, but this one seems to be coming down a lot harder than the last one, which is a, a little bit of a shame. We're going to use our RCS to try and get us going as far forward as possible here because we want to land somewhere close to this rover um and and here we come in for a final approach it, finally it looks like we're doing well we're coming in um with a target relative velocity of something like 200 meters per second and now that we're falling something like 30 which is great uh, surface wise a mere 10 meters per second and that's brilliant we've, we've we've done it guys we finally landed our first manned or kerbled mission to juna uh it's time to get out and do the obligatory pr uh work this is obviously a a big thing for the kerbal so we need to make sure that all the pictures are great and after all that it's time for the biggest joke of the series so it's time to get bill out of the land can because we need to go and grab uh the rover which means we need to repair some stuff so the first things first let's repack these parachutes right that, that that's definitely something that needs to be done Boom! Bill has no level experiences whatsoever. 
this entire mission has kind of fallen on its face right there. And with that, I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure. I will see you next time when we're going to land the glider and do something about this. I don't know what. If you guys have any ideas, please help.